flat to sort of the over the shoulder thing, right? Yeah, what I like about uh, Street Fighter is they've kept to its original look, um, which has always yeah. been a winner. And it's funny, it's probably one of the only games that you need the original vision. But as you turn on the 3D mode and you go in depth and yeah. you, you turn the angle, it is amazing. You're suddenly like, like but it's, it's so much harder to see what on earth is going on, well, right? Well, I am Ken, you know, when I'm in the game. <laughs> I, I am him in the game yeah. now. Um, it's really, really good. I mean, the graphics are fantastic. I, I actually found myself not going and, you know, turning off the 3D. I wanted it yeah. in 3D. It was so good and clear as well. Let's talk about your favourite game, T. Nintendogs and Cats. <laughs> he's, I know he's giving it all pilot wings, this. Nintendogs and Cats. I, I, played it, I have played it as well, so he's uh, <laughs> I refuse to play it. <laughs> Rubbish. He came in before and was like, Nintendogs and Cats is incredible. Yeah. Oh, T is great. Look at the, you know, look at the. <laughs> he's so indignant. <laughs> <laughs> don't be cross. It's not his fault you don't love him. It's for children. <laughs> <laughs> but he does look like you. <laughs> you can't even see you. You've gone invisible. What's happening here? It's having a pet. It's a virtual pet. And it's a lot of fun. It is a, a, aimed at the younger end of the market. He's, well, he's, he's really, really grumpy with me now. But he's looking, he's falling in love with it now. Look, uh, and there's <laughs> cats as well. Do they do the thing with the cats thing? Is it that realistic that, you know, like when a cat's going to be sick, does it do that? No, we're all mates. We're all, no, no, no. So? They, they don't want to approach. That would make it more when realistic. You stroke the screen, does it yeah, stroke you yeah, back? It comes up to you and it licks the screen and there's saliva and spit and it rolls okay. around, it does all the tricks. And I can't believe that saliva's a bonus. Rayman, who's been playing Rayman? I have as well. As well. well <laughs> how do you have time? <laughs> because he doesn't want to play with the little pets. <laughs> now, Rayman's great. Um, again, you get that in-depth per, uh, you know, perspective. It is brilliant. If you've ever played Rayman before, this is a great addition to the franchise. But um, you do. I actually found myself playing this longer than any other game. Oh, right, OK. Because obviously you've got the puzzles, it's challenging, and when you, when you mess up, it yeah. is... <laughs> Um, oh, you know, see where he's flying in this? Oh, yeah. Oh, look, it's the, yeah. the 3D when he's flying is brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely. When he's got his things swinging around the top of his head, his ears, and he's, uh, it's brilliant. And he's Absolutely chasing brilliant. a woman. But it, no this, this is where you might, uh, you know, discover maybe a little bit of sickness <laughs> as you're flying around <laughs> and you do it for more than an hour. Yeah. This, but this one, you know, adults and kids can play this game quite easily. It's fun. So, what other games have you been playing then? Um, I've been playing Ghost Recon and um, Splinter Cell. They're both special editions for okay. the 3DS. The kind of difference is it's, it's a lot more involved. It, it requires um, a lot more skill and thinking. A lot more thinking. It's not like the exactly. average just pick up and play. Yeah. You're going to have to go through quite a few cutscenes before you actually get into the nuts and bolts of the yeah. story. And it's like you've got a, a squad that you control and then you kind of use the 3D with the bottom bit and you look around the map and find where your enemies. That's gaming. You find where your enemies are and then target them and send your troops in. So it's really like, for such a small machine, it's a very involved game that, yeah. I, that I found myself like, really like, I need to get to the next level. I need to defeat these enemies. But you do like shooting though. Um, you are a fan of yeah, in-game, um, obviously, yeah, shooting, do, yeah. I do seem to enjoy shooting. You may need to stroke a, a puppy. Maybe you need to play more Nintendogs and Cats to placate <laughs> your anger. You know what, I had the two. I had the two. Like, Nintendogs, Ghost Recon, Nintendo. Ghost Recon. <laughs> <laughs> and Splinter Cell as well, yeah. which is uh, sort of similar, but it's uh, more espionage based. Uh, a bit more stealthy. Yeah, more stealthy. If you, yeah. if you know anything about Splinter Cell, it's all about sneaking around and not necessarily shooting, but killing your opponents silently. Oh, um, and what's your favourite oh, yeah. yeah. Only in the virtual world, of course. <laughs> yeah, just so we're clear for legal purposes there. Well, thank you so much, guys, for talking to us. Pleasure to have them. Let's hear it for Rampage, everybody. <laughs> Maybe next time you could bring me something other than crushing disappointment. Thanks. The charger. <laughs> <laughs> right, next up, we're going to be taking a look at Rango. Someone intelligent once said, the instant a chameleon sheriffs the land is the day the goldfish survive in sand. Sure, this quotation is purely fictional, but somewhere in the heart of Western America, there's rumor of a law-abiding lizard that actually enjoys riding seafood. Thanks to our state-of-the-art camera equipment, let's crawl through the underbrush and into a day in the life of Rango. Upon 
initial investigation, Rango appears to be the dominating force in an otherwise grief-stricken habitat. Species in the vicinity welcome his presence, particularly when deterring rodents who seem besotted with causing mayhem. Dirt, as we've aptly named the local surroundings, is bombarded with greenish rocks, which have been determined as giant human bogies. Rango seems adamant to collect these, possibly as a gift for his mate, Beans. It's unconfirmed thus far, but a lizard nicknamed Bad Bill seems equally keen to snatch them. Initial studies have proven most dwellers intelligent, as they have managed to dress themselves and create a community out of twigs to form a miniature village. Footage is also unmasked an underground distribution chain of performance enhancers, which appears fronted by wounded licking ravens. As the sun rises, Rango somehow puts on cowboy boots and reveals a straw which bizarrely fires popcorn seeds. As he leaves to maintain peace in the habitat, Rango has an overwhelming urge to smash every box in sight with his rear. Our psychologists have determined him to have a serious case of OCD. The desert is a huge place for this little critter, and he appears to have bribed what can only be described as a disgruntled emu to show for him to work at terminal velocities. Birds seem jealous and consistently attempt to smite his journey. Morning and the most incredible discovery has been made. The inhabitants of dirt have evolved in such a way that they can communicate verbally. Rango appears to never shut up, and from the minute decibels we managed to pick up, he teaches other locals about self-preservation through team-building exercises. Using his past experiences as reference points, colleagues learn to defend themselves from rattlesnakes and how to balance on runaway water trains. The seminars seem very popular at the conference center, which looks unusually like a saloon, and provides free beverages for the attendees. This is one smart chameleon. Bill. After a hard morning's work teaching workshops, we followed Rango to his local gym. Mind-blowing as it may seem, we can reveal that these simple-looking creatures have developed a futuristic martial arts simulator. High above the habitat, we followed Rango to an area covered in self-raising flour. It does get hotter than an oven out here, but still, we must all try to stop baking cakes. Surprising to us, Rango was spotted chatting to a dodgy-looking bird after his workout. Proves that you can't develop an electric tongue without help after all, doesn't it? You know what you have to do. After a hard day's work, it turns out that Rango's Roadrunner spontaneously turned into a goldfish, which wasn't nearly as good in traffic, so he took the train home instead. Little did he know that Bad Bill was in the next carriage, plotting ways to steal his next bogey. Rango, on the other hand, saw this as a fitting opportunity to practice skater grinds, having sampled Wounded Bird's latest performance enhancer. It becomes clear that the creatures of dirt are a phenomenon. This was justified no better than a giant rabbit we've just seen needlessly cannonball onto Rango's head. As Rango retires after a long day, he rests his head and gets some shut-eye. But having observed him through our special cameras, it seems he has quite the vivid imagination. Tossing and turning, he has nightmares of kidnap in a jail cell, zombies edging towards him and giant green bogies unleashing an alien force upon dirt. Ah! Sorry these camera lenses can zoom in way too close for comfort. Although wait, what's that sound? Would you believe it? The place is swarming with UFOs. Let's duck into a safe area to avoid those extraterrestrial terrors. No, not Area 51. Well, there you have it, a day in the life of one truly unique chameleon. There's plenty more research to be done, but until then, you can sleep easy at night. Whether you're abducted by aliens, hunted by zombies, or chased by Bad Bill himself, you know that Sheriff Rango will always have your back. So yes, we've been getting some more astounding comments from who is the biggest, baddest villain in gaming. Uh, Richard says, I've encountered so many villains over the years, but General Knox from Borderlands really stands out. Tim says, Sephiroth is definitely my favorite gaming villain. He's cool with a huge sword. Plus, pretty awesome theme music too. Oh, I think we'd all love a bit of theme music. Chris says, the evil barrel rolling girlfriend stealing gorilla. Yes, Donkey Kong is pretty bad too. So do join us on Facebook and Twitter and of course the Jinx.TV forums as well and you can join in the debate. Now, next up, we're going to be having a little bit of a gaming history lesson with TV's Mr. Ian Lee. Uh, I love my mum, but I hate my mum because she's the reason I got two of the severest beatings in my life. 
The first one was because she decided we should get a Betamax video recorder, not the more popular VHS. Yes, Betamax was much better quality, but you could only rent two films on it, Condor Man and Heaven Can Wait, both of which were complete and utter pony. The second reason I got bullied at school and violently assaulted was because of the computer my mum bought me. She got me a BBC Micro because they were educational. Yeah, it didn't matter that these were the same computers that every school across the country had, thereby meaning if you owned one, you were instantly an uber geek that demanded and required ten dead arms a day and six swift knees to the groin. I'd like to take this opportunity to say, Thanks ever so much, Mum. No, when I was a kid growing up, there was only one computer I wanted. It was this baby. The Spectrum was every schoolboy's number one dream. It was invented by this bloke, Sir Clive Sinclair. He got well bored of making calculators and stuff and started to make home computers. <laughs> Boobies. By the way, I should say, if you do want an accurate and in-depth history of video games, probably best to look elsewhere, as this is just the bits I can remember and stuff I nicked from the internet. Sorry about that. Sir Clive's, or Clive's as he was known then, first computer was the ZX80. History has recorded no details about this machine and no photographs were ever taken. In fact, Clive has destroyed every single model of this in an attempt to rewrite history. His follow-up was the ZX81. This is one better than the ZX80. My friend Andrew Bowden had one. I played it once. My sister was there. But it was the ZX Spectrum with its massive 48K that really took the world by storm. Yeah, okay geeks, I know there was a model released at the same time that only had 16K of memory, but I have literally zero interest in that, okay? So stop hiding behind ridiculous aliases on the internet forums and slagging me off and go and do something with your lives. Although not designed as a games machine, that's what it soon became famous for, much to Sinclair's disappointment. He seriously thought it was going to be like a serious business computer. <laughs> Man, that guy was crazy! The Spectrum was famous for its rubber keyboard. The buttons felt nice to touch, unless you had to type in any code. Then they became a massive pain in the backside. Look at them, they're ridiculous. You can't just type in words, you have to press combinations of keys. Do I press cap shift or do I press symbol shift? What the hell is a go sub? And how do I get the green words to work? What's an abs of Val and Len? In fact, weren't abs Val and Len a boy band in the 90s? Most kids weren't interested in this highfalutin nonsense though. They simply wanted to learn how to load up games and kick some computer butt. And boy, did the Spectrum have some great games. For example, School Days, where you played a naughty kid running around school. Head Over Heels, where you did things. And Jockey Wilson's Dark Challenge, where you played a man battling morbid obesity. The Spectrum also kick-started what has now become a major UK industry, that of the video game designer. Nowadays, it can take huge teams of people and millions of pounds to get a video game to market. Back then, it was usually some sad, lonely bloke sat tapping away in his bedroom. Johnny, can you take out the rubbish? Yeah, man, I'll do it in a minute. The first game designing superstar was Matt Smith, a lovely bloke who wrote the groundbreaking Manic Miner and then went on to write Jet Set Willy. Success went to his head, shall we say, and he retired from the gaming industry in 1988 and later went to live in a Dutch commune. There were various variations on the Spectrum after the initial success of the ZX. There was the Plus 2, the Plus 2A and the, that's right, Plus 3. But by far the most rubbish out of all of these was the QL. Another failed attempt by Clivey Baby to make another business computer. But fair play to him, he was going bonkers at this point in his career, as he tried to make a car stroke bike hybrid called the C5 that was powered entirely 
by magic. The Spectrum is approaching its 30th birthday and there are rumours of an anniversary edition being released. I've given even more credence to these rumours by saying them on television, a medium which we all know never lies. If they do release it, let's hope it loads a little bit faster than this, shall we? Come on! They'll forget this. Where's my PS3? So welcome back to The Blurb. Now, as some of you may or may not know, I've been erased. I've been taken and stripped away from history. There's no sign of me anywhere. I'm gone. I know it sounds kind of just a gnat's wing, a little bit dramatic, but what's new? Let's face it. No, my Facebook page, it's been taken down. It's been erased. It's been destroyed. It's been possibly hacked into. I've been kind of been left in this weird quandary, though. I don't have this online face or voice or ability to speak to anyone in the world anymore. I'm kind of stuck in my own little universe with... I, I can't even set up weird debates anymore about who's like a better fighter, like Blanca or Wolverine or like Nicole Richie or something. I know, like, Nicole Richie doesn't seem like an obvious choice, but she does have some amazing specialist fighting skills, like, um... Like, um... Oh, yeah, the ability to turn invisible. You know, when she stands sideways. That's a skill. That's a skill. Also, her special killer move, which is she gets her dad to, like, come down and he serenades you during the fight to, like, distract you. Yeah, that's how Lionel Richie does it. Yeah, not all night long, all fight long. Yeah. That's how it goes. That's how it rolls in the Richie household. It's this weird thing. It's like this loss of self, this loss of this other you that's out there in the world. And it like, got me thinking about how we interact in this global way on a global platform. And like we have Facebook and we have Twitter and we have all of like our gamer profiles. And this is how people see us and we can interact, you know, with people from all over the world, which is like incredible. And I'm not really complaining about it. It's just really brilliant. But all the worse when um, you get cut off, man. It's like a bug. I need my fix. It's all right, Luke. Luke, you're back. Hey. 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 But I'm not doing that again. Now, um, yeah, we tried to make Neil look cool. Turns out miracles can happen. Hey. Oh. Right, so we've got Neil here. What sort of game do you reckon you'd get involved in? When I step out the house in the morning, I'm just seeing like Grand Theft Auto bars above me. That's the way I see the world now. If you're tromping to the office, yeah, yeah and like game scenario, have you ever thought like right now? It'd be a lot easier if I could fly to work or if I could hop in a low rider and then like bop down. I get have like a low rider with you. Yeah, a Jinx branded low rider. Okay, are you gonna have you gonna have weapons? Are you gonna have let's say I mean let's say you're probably not a baddie, are you? No, I think um I was raised by far too an authoritarian mother. I think if, you know, in my grand theft hall oh, I'd be the one helping an old lady across the street. That'd be like how I'd earn my XP. So, in the background, you might even have old ladies like praising you, being like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Instead of like all these like hoochies and hot pants, you know, I'll just have like Ethel, you know, <laughs> waving Ethel on. I've just, dropped Ethel her, and Brenda. I've just dropped her off in the low rider. There you go, Ethel. She See you tomorrow. <laughs> well, you're wearing a hoodie and you got the hood down. I always, yeah, I always keep it down. How else would I display, you know, all the bling that I wear? Okay, so you're gonna have a load of bling? Yeah, something I never do. I've never found a piece of bling. Another thing I bought with my student loan was a ridiculously fake, like, dollar sign bling ring. Just purposely, just to wear it around, just to see if it got a reaction. Can I get that in there? Yeah, get absolutely. Get a big, big dollar sign ring on. Yeah, all the, all the diamantes that finger could carry. <laughs> I'm going to be giving you a hoodie, All right. and we need some kind of logo. I've always liked, um, you know, just the, the, the watchman, typical smiley face. Just a yellow, yellow smiley face with just, you know, a big smile on it. Are you just going to go standard jeans? Are you just thinking like... I don't think a man of my stature can really carry spandex. I don't know, maybe some garlic bread? It's some nice, garlic bread, that's brilliant. A nice baguette of garlic bread. What are the other points? So at the top, you've got your health bar and those hearts. You've also got like the red health bar. And above that, you've got the white, how much your body armor is holding together. Although I'm sure it'd be like health and cholesterol in my case. You know? <laughs> right, so for your low rider, do you have a favorite color? What color would you like for your low rider? I think it's got to be green. Okay, cool. Do you have a, do you reckon it'll have like flames along the side or maybe biscuits? To, to biscuits. entice all the old ladies. Like, look, I'm one of you. A jammy dodger would go, maybe a jammy dodger rim. 
A jammy dodger rim. That's, Can you imagine that? That is, that is genius. You just be like reaching down trying to scoop the jam out. <laughs> Into the lamp post. Yeah. Oh, I think maybe just a mobility ramp. Okay, we'll have a mobility ramp. The car can just, you know, drop down on its hydraulics, the door can open and down can come the ramp. And on comes on, on comes Dr. Dre and you like. Yeah. Yeah. Look, old ladies love Dr. They Dre. Do, yeah. I've never snowboarded, but I've always wanted to wear the goggles. Snowboarding goggles it is. Okay, here it is, pretty much done. There I am. A straight buster. Yeah. Paint it up digitally in like Photoshop or something and uh, yes. send that over so you should be able to see that on the website or something. Looking forward to it. Okay. Thank you. Cool. So finally we get to have a look at these 2D wonderment pictures that we were going on about the whole show. Uh, we have actually created a Jinx TV gallery. Woo! Yeah, check it out. So uh, let's, uh, let's bring on Neil. <laughs> no wait, you're there. Hi Neil. Hey guys. Right, okay, let's have a look at some of these pictures. So, um, Aoife, uh, from the Jinx team, obviously. Mm. Ta-da! Wow! Woo! You know what, that's actually how she dresses for the office. <laughs> that's brilliant. Look, I like how her hair's really big. Um, I do like her giant axe, although initially I did think it was an umbrella. It's incredible, I'm liking the boots. So, is this how she sees herself? Do you think? Worryingly, I think she does. She does. <laughs> Are you ready to see what uh, this yeah. man thought of you and how your really depressing stories influenced his pen drawing? I can't fail. Let's find out. Oh, wait. Let's go. Come on. Oh, oh look at oh, this. Wait. Not <laughs> wait, bad. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What have you got a sandwich? <laughs> it's a bit of garlic bread. <laughs> It's garlic bread. We talked about my favourite meal, and uh, you know it's garlic bread, so it's only right that I have a, a slice. Okay, um, look, at this. Right, look, it's 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 really good. Why are there two old grannies sitting on your? We car? were talking about you know like community service, and I didn't want to you know. Yeah, but they're talking about community service, and there's having two old grannies on your car. What's wrong with having a granny on your car? <laughs> look, I got.